Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you, this time talking episodes 14 and 15 of Season 3 of Legends of Tomorrow, Amazing Grace and Necromancing the Stone. So Amazing Grace, I don't have a huge amount to say about this episode. It was definitely, an, uh, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it though. It was definitely nice to have something that was fun but not painfully silly. And the idea of Elvis being a totem bearer is really on the edge of that, but it's it's enough that it the episode restrains itself enough that it works. It also kind of reminds me of that uh, Bruce Campbell movie, uh, El um, Bubba Hotep, which is basically Elvis didn't die; he's an old man, and then he finds out like a mummy is preying on the people who live in his retirement home, and he gets help from a black guy who says that he's actually JFK. I mean, it's it's a pretty crazy out there movie, but it's quite a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it was a fun episode. I uh, really did like it that, uh, especially like the moment when like the, those ghosts and stuff rose out of the graveyard. That was, that was really cool. And uh, the the whole thing with the Death Totem and the Sixth Tribe of Zambezi deciding to fight for Malus. I mean, that's that's interesting stuff. We finally kind of started to get a clearer picture of some uh, of some things that are happening. But for the most part, it was just kind of a one shot episode that uh, was meant there to sort of give us a break between all the serious stuff. Now, necromancing the stone. Oh uh, well, of course we've got Matt Ryan back as Constantine, so I am totally there. Um, Gotta love that, especially if he throws out a reference to Doctor Who, which, remember, has been established to exist in the Arrowverse, the TV show anyway. Um, and of course, you also kind of get to see some fun moments like <laughs> him playing around with a chicken, which I thought was hilarious. Um, and, uh, you know, Ava and Gary sort of recap some of the stuff from uh, the Constantine TV series, which has been retconned to now officially be part of the Arrowverse. And um, none of the CW shows have been renewed for their next seasons, but you know the word around the internet is that if Legends come back, comes back, and there's no reason to think that it won't, they're going to bring Matt Ryan on as a regular, and uh, that would be absolutely amazing. You know, John Constantine is really great when he's kind of off on sort of his own little universe thing, doing his own thing. It's sort of like the Vertigo. John Constantine, but I've always had a real soft spot for the mainstream DC Universe John Constantine, who like once called Batman Squire, which is just utterly hilarious. Um, which and they've always kind of been presented as sort of being two different versions of the same character, and, and both of them are extremely enjoyable. Although, in a lot of ways, I always sort of felt that. Um, the Constantine we were seeing on the t where his own TV show was sort of more, uh, a little bit more, well, no, no, I take that back. Uh, they did throw in a lot of references to the DC Universe proper. I mean, we saw Dr. Fate's helmet and pa Pandora's guns. So, yeah, thinking on it back, he always was more, a little bit more the mainstream DC Universe uh, Constantine. And I do absolutely love the fact that they acknowledge that he looks like Sting. And it's been said by uh, by his creators that John Constantine was modeled on Sting. And uh, they do a nice little recap about who Astra was and that she was this little girl that Constantine tried to help and ended up accidentally sending to getting her sent to hell. And, um, you know, Malice does try to say, like, hey, I can get her out of hell, and of course John doesn't buy it. I love the way he says, you know, nobody escapes hell. And let's keep in mind, John is a guy who is positive that he's uh, he's headed for the lake of fire when his time is up, and he's got pretty good reasons to believe that. But what I really liked is uh, that little conversation he had with Sarah at the end, where she said, like, if Malice had really been able to free Astra from hell, you'd have given me up to him, wouldn't you? And John is like in a heartbeat, and uh, he's not joking. He is absolutely not joking. If you've read enough Hellblazer. That is exactly the kind of thing John Constantine does. You know, Constantine is a great character, but he is not somebody you want to be friends with. Terrible things happen to people who are John Constantine's friends, more often than not, as the result of John's actions. John is a guy that is very much, I've got a goal, 
And if I have to screw over my friends in order to achieve it, well, okay, that's gonna have that's gonna be how it is. He does, it's not the sort of thing he does happily, but he will do it. So even his friends and his teammates are often like, John, you complete and utter bastard. And you know, he even mentions again his line, like, I'm a nasty piece of work. And as sympathetic as one can be for John, he's right. You know. He does a lot of really terrible things, and he is sometimes an extremely selfish person. But he's also a person that does care deeply about others at times, and will do whatever it takes to help someone if he thinks they're somebody that he is worth helping. <laughs> Which is all part of what makes John such a fantastic character. You know, there are moments when you when you absolutely hate him, but he's still someone you want to root for and care about because as much as a bastard as he is at the heart at the end of the day he you can't help but think he's still kind of a good person and to be fair john is a guy who has had a really really tough life i mean if you know his story from the comics yeah john did not have a happy life uh, he's been, he's been through some stuff uh but anyway um, Mick being the fire totem bearer, I mean, that was potentially really fantastic, but nothing much really came from that. Although, again, watching uh, Constantine light his cigarette from that, oh my god, that's perfect. That's exactly the kind of crap John does. I loved it so much. Um, the conversation with Wally and Jesse, uh, that was pretty, pretty nicely done. Uh, I like how he did pretty quickly see through it and uh, even Malice had to compliment Wally on like oh you didn't fall for that good for you I mean the speech was laying it on a little thick especially since if you're a fan of the comics you know that Wally ultimately gets together with Linda Park except in the Arrowverse Linda Park is Dr. Light in the flash fodder in season two and she's an adult you know somewhere in her 20s and stuff so I don't think Wally's going to be hooking up with her I'm not sure how they're going to play that I guess we'll just have to see down the road. Um, also nice to see uh, Commander Steel come back. Uh, you know, a little disappointed that Nate didn't do a better job of kind of standing up for himself there. Uh, him bearing the Earth Totem seemed potentially really interesting to me, but never really went anywhere. But I do like the idea that by the end of all of this, they might really have the legends uh, each bearing a totem. Um, although the one that Nora has uh, being an exception, um, people have kind of pointed out that it looks like they're sowing the seeds for her to potentially stab her dad in the back, which would be pretty darn awesome. I mean, the, the ultimate way for Damien Dark to go down, have his own daughter turn against him. That's awesome. And, um, hmm. yeah, I think that covers everything I had to say about this episode, guys, so I'm going to call it here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I absolutely loved when John talked about like casting some magic on a Bebo doll while, while he was drunk and then it telling him all kinds of horrible things. And, uh, you know, Gary's Dungeons and Dragons stuff, especially the bit at the end where John is playing Dungeons and Dragons with them. It reminds me so much of uh, Harry Dresden from the Dresden Files, which is kind of weird because, like, although they're both sort of like occult private investigator wizard type guys. Harry Dresden is basically the utter opposite of John Constantine. And uh, hilariously, when there was a brief one season uh, Dresden Files TV show, Harry Dresden was played by Paul Blackthorne. So yeah, I would, I, I would so love for Quentin Lance and John to be, that would be great. And then just so if there was some little reference in to, you know, Paul Blackthorne having been Harry Dresden, because he really was very, very good as Harry Dresden. And incidentally, the Dresden Files series is very, very much recommended. It's it's good, good stuff. Um, so I'm going to call it here, guys. As always, please comment, rate, and subscribe, and uh, follow me on Twitter at Who's Your Jedi, and join me on Tumblr at Jedi Reviewer. Until next time, take care and have a good one.